want him early. Joe, Joe, I want a GHK. Yes, Tom. Or in my experience, the accuracy excels over its competitors right from the Joe, I want a Tokyo Marui. Yes, Tom. And loud enough to mess with my external mic. Joe, I want a GHK. Yes, Tom. Continued effort to make the MWS as good as it can be really paid off. It goes to show the true dedication Joe, of the company I want a TM. and the care that goes into that. Yes, Tom. The trigger brake is clean and sharp, but the reset feels Joe, quite Joe, I want wide. a GHK. Yes, Tom. Geared towards shock mitigation and durable endurance. Joe! Before it's released. Yeah? I want a TM. Yes, Tom. I've ran roughly a thousand rounds through the rifle, and the Gen 2 bolt carrier has no signs Joe, of Joe, I want a GHK! No signs at all. Yes, Tom. Joe, I want a Bradburst! Yes, Tom. So ultimately, Joe and the dogs got really fed up and I had to make a choice. And this is what I chose. GHK M4 A1. And we're just gonna do the first shot fired out of my new GHK M4 A1. Um, I haven't even put a BB through this yet, so this is literally the first time we're gonna fire it. Um, let's get on with it then. Oh, that was exciting, wasn't it? And that's it, first mag. Welcome back to AA TV. I'm Tom Anvil Hibbard, and today we're going to talk about why I ended up choosing this GHK M4A1 gas blowback rifle. So why did I go for this particular gas blowback rifle? So let's go through quite quickly some of the choices that I made. Weapon system, I wanted an M4A1. I did look at getting an AK, but I decided I, I liked the classic AR profile and particularly I, didn't, I don't have an M4A1 in the armory at the moment. That left me with two main choices, either a TM MWS or the GHK. And really, I struggle to choose between them. I'm not a big user of gas blowback rifles. In fact, this is my first one ever. And I don't even use pistols that much either. So I don't really have much kind of knowledge going into this. So there's a few people I want to thank who have really helped shape this decision. First one was Bada Bing of Bada Bing Pictures. Fantastic channel, mainly focusing on gas blowbacks. Um, I reached out to him and had a really good conversation by direct message about what to get. I outlined my criteria, which were Realism, immersion, trigger feel, recall impulse, trademarks were super important, and the kind of not necessarily the quality, but the realism of the finish. And I'll touch on that a bit later. He was a super, super, super helpful guy. Many thanks. The other people I want to thank are Team Roy, uh, a group of airsofters that I talk to quite regularly, um, most of whom are now gas blowback users, so I got really, some really good advice from them as well. And ultimately, looking at the pros and the cons, um, the TM seems a bit more of a race gun, kind of more performance orientated, probably a better shooting gun overall, but actually what I wanted was realism, immersion, trigger feel, and all of that kind of stuff. And this was the one that had the most pros versus cons. Okay. Not the best packaging in the world, not the worst. Uh, this is the, now something I want to talk about, this is the Cybergun licensed version, um, which you can't get in the UK. You have to go and get it overseas. So I imported this from Samoon in Taiwan. Um, if you're gonna import stuff, make sure you have a defense. Bad stuff can happen. Okay, so fairly standard packaging. Let's put this to one side. Okay, so this was it as it came. So it's got front sight adjustment tools, bits and bobs, not particularly exciting. Green gas magazine. Someone chucked in a load of accessories, pens, um, some oil bottles, which was great, really super useful. I did get an additional CO2 mag, 
Once I've worked out what magazines I want, I'm gonna order more. But for now, I've got a CO2 and a green gas. And we'll work out later on which ones we look we like. So let's just go through it from tip to butt. Um, plus we'll have a look at the materials. So out front, we have an A2 birdcage. Barrels marked uh, CMP 556 NATO 1-7. So that's pretty much the correct markings. And that's also steel. Front sight post is not F marked. But it's also steel. Retaining caps. Really nice cap rail, style rail. No trade, no trades on that, but it's nicely made, nice and sharp. Um, no need to replace that unless you go for a completely different style. The hop up, hop up unit is. I'll show you very quickly. Hop up unit is underneath this rotary dial and the outer barrel. You can see the. Colt trademarks right here. Really nicely done. They're not too nice. Some guns like my Marui, t my Marui NGRS are almost, the trademarks are almost too nice. The real ones don't have trademarks like that. Forgive the soil, I've just been uh, cleaning it. The standard flat top receiver. What's a bit weird is this rear sight. Uh, I'm not sure, I've not really seen one, but it's gonna get chucked in the parts bin straight away anyway, and I'll put a, put a CAC 600 on or something. Um, Ford assist, mag release, just like you'd expect on any AR M4 carbine. The stock is a replica of the one which is currently on issue to the US Army, so when they accept them, they have this stock attached. Um, it's kind of standard six position stock. I don't like it, so I'm going to be swapping that out for something else, but it is authentic, and that, again, that can go in the parts bin. Um, one of the biggest changes for me coming from an AEG was the grip, so it's a lot slimmer. It's actually really comfortable. I didn't, re I didn't realize, I mean, I shot an AR about 20 years ago in Arizona, and I've completely forgotten. Um, obviously it's hollow, because there's no motor, because it's a gas blowback, but it's very comfortable, it's very slim, really nice to grip. So that was quite a pleasant surprise. Um, and I'll probably, I'll probably end up changing this A2 out. I don't like the, I like a steeper angle, and this nubbin here is really annoying. At the very least, I'll end up taking this nubbin off and using it anyway. But what's the most, Important thing, well it's gas blowback. So just like a gas blowback pistol, it has big recoil, nice kick. Um, and particularly I've got this one for the realism. So, you know, just like a real one, you have a bolt which moves back and forward. So the bolt's locked back on the empty mag, fresh mag in, and then you hit the bolt release, just like on a real one, and the bolt will go forward pick up the next BB. Okay. And you have a mechanical trigger rather than an AEG, which is effectively just a switch. So I will, gun is totally clear and safe, I've already checked. Okay, and part of the reason I bought the GHK, and one of the main reasons I bought the GHK was for the trigger. Um, I had to go on someone's Marui and I had to go on someone's GHK and my, in my opinion, and your opinion may differ, the trigger on the GHK is more superior. Um, it's kind of, it's more tactile, has more feedback. And has a really nice positive reset on it as well. Tiny bit of take up, slightly mushy wall, break. Really positive and quite short reset. And there we go again. So it's a really interesting experience for me to be firing this. Completely different to an AEG and even completely different to my recoil Marui. So gas plate, this has much stronger recoil. And the trigger is much more fun, much nicer to use. So you really know you fired it. And it's one of the biggest things I wanted moving from an AEG. 
going to a gas blowback was that real kind of sense of connecting with a gun. So one of the things I've really liked about coming from an AEG to a gas blowback rifle is the fire selector. On an AEG, it just kind of clicks. On this one, you can really feel that something's actually happening inside the trigger group. So for instance, if I try to go, and also it's quite realistic. So if I try to go to safe from semi, it won't go. Just like a real one, the hammer needs to be cocked before you can put the weapon on safe. Okay, and one of the other things I really liked about the GHK is having watched an awful lot of YouTube videos, I really wanted the same experience to a certain extent when you cracked it open. So that's the inside there. Now this looks, to my untrained eye, looks very similar to the insides of an actual AR. Uh, and you can also, of course, strip the bolt and the charging handle out and you also have a buffer just like in the real one too so that's your bolt looks a lot like a real AR bolt virtually identical certainly from a distance you couldn't tell obviously this has the working parts of the gas blowback mechanism on the front and then this is the bit you replace when you change the power so you put a new nozzle on effectively you change this whole this whole unit here okay one thing i did get with it is some additional nozzles so i've got uh the original nozzle the one jaw nozzle and the low power nozzle already i had samoon put in the one jaw nozzle when it was before it was imported so i asked them to do that for me which was great okay coming from an engineering and design background I really like this gun. I think it's really well made. It inspires confidence. Everything snicks and goes back into position correctly. Uh, the noises are really good, which means the tolerances are good, which gives me a lot of confidence in it. Okay, so what we're going to do with this? Well, aside from me really enjoying playing with it, we're going to turn this into a bit of a series. So I'm not an expert in glass blowback rifles. We want, I want to cover topics for me to learn like maintenance and performance and what temperature differences do and other aspects of using a gas blowback rifle. So it's almost like living with a gas blowback rifle. Um, I'm not an expert as we've talked about um, on using gas blowback rifles so I'm going to either borrow some experience or bring people in that do know that what they're talking about and try and get a really good set of information out there for you. Okay, thanks for watching AATV. I've been Tom Anvil Hibbard. If you like what we do, please like, subscribe. The best thing you can do for the channel is share it with people who aren't already watching. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.